Rabbi Simcha Torah. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome. Ha Shemayak. It is Simcha Torah, the joy of the word, the joy of the word. We dance with the Torah scroll, scroll today. This is the eighth day of Sukkot. Over today, we completed the first phase, the first seven days. Now we're in the eighth day. Again, starting off, let's let's look at the scriptural basis. Numbers chapter 29, verse 12. And on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, you shall have an holy convocation. You shall do no work, and you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Those seven days were up yesterday. And then it says on the eighth day, we're to have a holy convocation and do no work yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Let's um, let's look at the last part of this. And on the seventh day, which was yesterday, okay, and on the seventh day, seven bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, and their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. On the eighth day, here we go, you shall have a solemn assembly. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer a burnt offering a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savior unto the Lord. One bullock, only one. Mm -hmm. You know, down from that 13 on the first day, <laughs> a drastic oh, reduction okay. even from yesterday where you had seven. Okay? Yeah. All right, where was I? Okay. But well, you shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savior unto the Lord. One bullock, one ram, seven lambs of the first year without blemish. Their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullock, for the ram, and for the lamb shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. These things ye shall do unto the Lord in your set feasts, beside your vows and your free will offerings, for your burnt offerings and for your peace offerings. And Moses told the children of Israel according to all that the Lord commanded him. Mm. Okay? So the last of the offerings are today. Only one bull. No 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Just one today. Alright? And remember, whenever, you know, I say this every day. I've been saying this every day for the past seven days. Whenever there is an offering or sacrifice required, it is to redeem something. Mm -hmm. Just like Yeshua's sacrifice on the cross on Calvary redeemed us by his blood by his sacrifice he is the lamb without blemish amen. amen okay so in order to qualify remember I've been telling you there's a special blessing of healing that is on this entire day but in order to qualify for it, you have to make the necessary offerings from day one through day seven, as well as the one from day eight. And the Holy Spirit, I think it was either yesterday or the day before, told me to remind you, it came to my mind, um, if you truly do not have a sacrifice to give at this time, you can pledge it. You can vow it. That when you get it, 
you are going to make the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, tell you a couple little stories here real quick. When I first started tithing back in 1988, I had joined the new, I had moved from Detroit to the DC, Washington, D.C. area and joined um, 12th Street Baptist Church, very large church, full of, you know, erudite people, people who were high up in the government of D.C. and the United States and folks that had gone to college and got this degree and that degree and this type of position or had this type of business. I mean, it was it was loaded, okay, mm -hmm. with very erudite, you know, well-to-do people. And my little mm -hmm. self up in there, you know, had to make sure I wash, I wash out a shirt and iron it every morning, <laughs> every Sunday morning, so I could go to church, you know. And these people had uh, $1,000 suits and, and stuff, and mm -hmm. the women were, oh boy, they, they would wear this, those Sunday hats and everything. Oh, yeah. And I was like, ooh, wow, look at, look at him, look at her, you know. And I was in the new members class. Oh. And my new members teacher was Doris McMillan. Some of you might recognize her. She used to be on BET on TV. She was a she had a regular show on BET. She even had a couple of movie spots as a newscaster. I believe all the president's men, she was a newscaster in that movie you know, the Clint Eastwood movie, mm -hmm. where he was uh, kind of a washed up CIA agent. Or, um, what's that, uh, security service for the president. And she was teaching the class. And she was, oh boy, she was very meticulously dressed. Had very expensive jewelry on, you know, diamonds and gold, you know. I was very impressed, okay. Mm -hmm. Real nice lady, you know. She didn't put on airs, didn't have her nose turned up, didn't look down on anybody. She was just uh, very nice, very, very nice lady. And I got to know her pretty well. But before that, she was teaching about tithing, the new members coming in, telling them about tithing. And so she was teaching about tithing, and she says, you know, hey, I make a lot of money as a newscaster, but I tithe. Mm -hmm. I give 10%. Okay. And so I said, okay, I was just starting to read the Bible. Okay, I was maybe halfway through reading from Genesis to Revelation at that point. I was serious. I, every day I would read my, my Bible and I believed what I read. Okay? And so she was teaching on times. I said, I'm going to start tithing. <laughs> So that Friday, and I said, this is the Friday I start tithing. So I figure out my tithe, my 10%. Okay. I write out the check. As soon as I write out the check, I pick up the phone. I said, hey, can I borrow <laughs> you know, $50 or $70 to next payday? No sooner than I wrote out the tithe check, I was borrowing to cover it. Wow. That's how much money I thought I didn't have. And maybe how much money I didn't have all at the same time. Maybe I really didn't have any money. Yeah. So I did that. And like I said, I was borrowing. But I kept it up. I don't know how many times I borrowed money or got behind on this. Or, but at some point in time, I got even or got a little ahead. Somehow, I don't know how. Hmm. You know, where I could tithe and not call someone up to borrow money to cover my tithe. Wow. Okay? But that's how I started tithing. <laughs> that's how little money I had that I could, that I thought I could give to the Lord. But somehow, I got more money or my money went a little further or I, less gas in the gas, you know, you know, the gas, something, something happened and I was able to tithe, and I was still able to pay my bills. I don't know what. I didn't get a raise, 
but I was able to tithe where I couldn't tithe before. And that was in 1988, in the spring of 1988. Then in the fall of 1990, I moved uh, to the New York area, and I got a job in Manhattan, in New York. Nice increase in pay, okay? Nice increase in pay. And got that job and kept tithing. And I joined, I joined a church, a Pentecostal church, a, what we call, I call, we call it a word church. They were really heavy on the word. So I tithed. And then I joined after oh, maybe close to a year, eight months, whatever, I joined another Baptist church, one that I thought had more love. And it did, it had more love. Because that's where you found me. Okay. <laughs> That's where Sister Leslie and I met. And I was in the new members class of that church because I joined. And one of the deaconess was teaching the new members class. Uh, a deaconess is the wife of a deacon. So she was teaching the class, a very nice lady. And the question came up, do you tithe from your net check, your net paycheck, mm -hmm. or your gross amount on your paycheck? Do you tithe from net or gross? And I think I was of the opinion that you tithe from your net. And a couple other people may have said something. And she said, <laughs> like Reverend, uh, Reverend. Re Reverend Perry, yep. he, he's the one that married Naviar Leslie and myself, mm -hmm. she uh, quoted from him. She said, like Reverend Perry said, do you want net blessings or gross blessings? Do you want net breaking <laughs> blessings? You know, when they did what Yeshua told them and they pulled the net up, they caught so much fish that it began to break the net. The net began to rip. Mm -hmm. It was too much weight. So do you want net blessings or gross blessings, or do you want net breaking blessings? So, but before she said that, and she said, "Do you want net blessings or gross blessings?" I said, "That's very clever. It sounds good, but that's not the word of God." I was really big on the word. I had read the entire Bible by then. By the time I moved up to uh, the New York area, Stanford, Connecticut, and I said that to her. <laughs> you know, real, you know, real serious, like, oh, you know, boy. the word, what, what does the word say? And she said, okay. And she quickly turned to the Bible. Praise God, she knew the word. Amen. And she quoted Yeshua when they had come to Yeshua in the Gospels. And they were complaining about paying the temple tax or the tithe and having to pay the Roman occupational tax. Mm -hmm. You know, that the you know the Roman the Roman army leveled on them and Caesar expected his tribute. Yeah. And so Yeshua said, Let me let me see that coin. And he said, Whose likeness is on this coin? And he said, Caesar. And he said, Whose inscription is on this coin? And they said, Caesar. And he said, render unto God the things that are God. And render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And right there instantly I was convicted in my spirit that I should tithe from gross. Because really that's what they were asking Yeshua about. Can we, you know, can we get some relief? Can we tithe from net instead of gross? You know, because they had to give Caesar his money or else they'll it'd kill him. Mm -hmm. Okay? Or throw him in jail, throw him in prison. Mm -hmm. So they were going to pay Caesar. Yep. No doubt. Caesar was going to get his. <laughs> yeah. So what they were really asking, can we, you know, after Caesar takes his cut, can we give our temple tax tithe and offering 
based on what is left. That's what they were asking mm -hmm. in reality when you look at the whole situation. Yeah. Okay? And so I, I, I instantly saw that in the scripture. And I, I decided I should be tithing based on my gross. And I started tithing from gross. That was in 1990. Started tithing from net in 1988. Got to a point where that wasn't a problem. Then I started tithing from gross. Didn't notice much of a problem with that. Tithing from gross. And the church that we belong to, uh, Union Baptist Church in Stanford, Connecticut. And I know Baptist churches will do this. They list your tithe. At the end of the year, you're posted. You gave this much. <laughs> and uh, I really considered myself a man of God. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't called. I hadn't received or heard my call to the ministry yet. You're called from the womb. But I didn't know I was called at that time. But I was still considered myself a man of God, a follower of Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach. So I didn't want to look bad on that, you know, on that list. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. I didn't want to look too bad. All right. I wanted, you know, to have, you know, a few thousand change. dollars up there. People ain't right. They shouldn't be showing their all their business. I, I wouldn't do that, but you know. And you knew who you knew who the number one tiger was in the church too, yep. because of that. And but that's not the reason why I tithe. I didn't even when I started tithing from gross, I didn't even know that they published that list every year, you know. But at the end of the year, I found out. <laughs> you know, ooh, wow, look at this. Okay. Mm -hmm. But for several years, I tithed from gross. Starting in 1990. Then I received my call. And then um, a year or two later, I went to seminary. And I had a class my first semester at ORU. And this particular, somehow we got on the subject of tithing in class, in lecture. Mm -hmm. And he said he didn't believe in tithing. And I was like, what? What do you mean you don't believe in tithing? And he said, he said he didn't tithe. And I, we, we asked why. He said, because it all belongs to God. Mm. All of it is the Lord's. So I don't tithe, tithe. He has access to all my money in any amount, not just 10%. Amen. Okay. And I've read things that uh, they say actually... Uh, an Old Testament believer, you know, in the Second Temple period, or even in the First Temple period, they actually gave approximately 30 to 35 percent of their income to the temple. Mm -hmm. The tithe, see, the tithe is not to run the church as we use it for today. The tithe is just for the support of the Levites, those who handle the gospel, those who who handle the Word of God on a full-time basis. That's what, where the tithe goes. We have all kind of offerings, sin offerings, peace offerings, um, you name it, that went into, and the temple tax, the half shekel that went for the upkeep of the temple and everything else. The tithe was the Levites' money. And then the Levites had to give a tithe or whatever they got to the high priest. Mm -hmm. I don't know for sure if the high priest had to give a tithe to anyone or not. But that's how it went. The people gave a tithe to the Levites, and then the Levites gave a tithe to the head man, okay, to the high priest, you know, to the Cohen Godal. So he said that I didn't. I didn't particularly like him that much, and he didn't like me. Um, I would read material and write my papers based on this research material that he didn't like. Mm -hmm. I was getting the journals from the Dallas 
theological, you know, the Dallas yeah. Theological yeah. Seminary. Yeah. Ooh, wonderful <laughs> scholarship in that place. But I went to a Pentecostal uh, seminary. And at the Dallas School of Theology, if you even stuttered, they asked you to leave. They no <laughs> tongues, no gifts, right. n- none of that stuff. But the scholar, the scholarly but level they, was high. They were That's yes, funny. their their scholarship was par excellence. Mm. Okay, and so I would read their journals, and I would write research papers based on their journals, and plus the information that we were getting there at ORU. He just didn't like that. (laughs) And he couldn't tear it up because as far as, you know, when you're in seminary, you're in grad school. You're in graduate school. Mm -hmm. And so it met all the requirements of the university. But he didn't like it. And I remember when it came time for grades to be given out, he miscalculated my grade. And I pointed it out to him, and I said, you know, hey, I got an A on the final. I got an A uh, on all your tests. You gave me a B on my paper, but you knocked my grade down because you said I missed so many days. And I had permission to to miss those days. So he couldn't count it against me and give me a lower grade. And when I pointed this out to him, he had to give me the A. Hmm. Okay, he he couldn't refuse me. Gives me the A there in his office. I think there were other people, were there other people around? I can't remember for sure. I think there were, because everybody was kind of getting their grade calculated at the end of the, the term. And he actually looked up and said to me, you don't deserve an A but put it down. Hmm. And I said, okay, thank you. Wow. And just left. Took my A and left. Actually said that to my face. In front of people, if I remember correctly. Hmm. And I just took it and walked out. Like I said, I had A's on the finals, A's on this test, A's on that test. The only thing I got a B on was a paper that I turned into him where he could, mm-hmm. you know, Subje- you know, subjectively mm-hmm. give me a lower grade. And, but he said that about it all belonging to the Lord. And then when I left seminary and I began to minister and I started a ministry, the Lord began to give me certain projects to complete and do. I want you to do this. I want you to move here, cross country, and do this and do that. And I was always obedient, immediately. Sister Leslie, I'll tell you, I, yeah. you know, I've come to her and said, uh, the Lord just told me to do blah, blah, blah. Hmm, okay. And these tasks, when I said, you know, I never looked or asked how much it cost. I just did them, mm-hmm. always, 100%. Never once question what I was told to do. And when I looked at, sometimes I'll take a peek. I'll, I'll look at what we spent for the Gospels and how much money I made from my job. Mm-hmm. And I said, wow. I wasn't tithing, I wasn't counting 10% of anything, but when I add everything up, it looks like I'm giving 10% anyway. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, depending on what point in the year it was, sometimes I would have given 15 to 30%. And like now, I really don't, I don't keep track. I just do it, you know. I might one or two months say, oh, you know, I spent 15% of my income. I'm I'm well above 10% in ministry uh, and and what I give to the ministry. 
I'm probably closer to 30% or, or even greater or whatever because I, I don't count. You know, Lord says do this, says go here, okay, go to seminary. That, you know, I paid for seminary cash money out of my own pocket, okay? He said go study acupuncture. Yeah, I took out loans to, to, to study acupuncture. I'm going to have to pay that back. You know, we're still going to be doing that when we go to Florida to get our doctorates. And, you know, all this moving. We moved here uh, to the Denver area in 2017, and here it is 2022, and we're moving to Florida, to the Gainesville, Florida area. Yep. That's a lot of money. Yep. And then when you count the tuition, you know, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars that this is going to wind up costing us in tuition. Both Naviat, Leslie, and myself in school. And wow, okay, money. So when I'm given, when we are giving these projects, we just do them. Mm -hmm. How much does it cost? We've never asked how much it costs. We just pay the bill, you know, we, we, okay, we got to go here, here, okay, how much is that? I'm a, we're going to rent uh, maybe two trucks to move everything today and tomorrow. That's going to cost over $8,000 just for the moving trucks. Mm -hmm. Not counting the gas, hotel, you know, because it's about a 24, 27-hour drive, so we're going to have to stop and stay in hotels um, probably at least two nights, mm -hmm. okay? Hotel, food, then, you know, of course we had to pay for the place that we're going to move to mm -hmm. and everything. And then we're gonna be in school. Maybe in uh, we might be in as early as December. More than likely it'll be in the spring sometime. You know, give us a chance to get set up and okay get stable uh, see where we're at financially and everything what, what you know what we need to do uh, and so forth so that's my story about tithing and I've been telling you every day that you're supposed to bring a sacrifice every day or at least give one big one to cover these eight days. And I didn't come to that revelation until the day before Sukkot, the day or two before Sukkot. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I've been reading this scripture for years. I never noticed that I was supposed to, to give a, an offering every single day. Mm -hmm. So I quickly told Navajo Leslie, we got to give an offering that will cover these eight days. And we did. You know, right when our money is the tightest. I have, we haven't been able to work the past two, two and a half weeks. How well would you guys be doing if you missed two or three paychecks? And then had to, like I say, come up with $8,000 for the moving trucks. It costs us something like almost $300 just to buy boxes to pack everything up. Okay, let alone the other things that we have to pay and take care of, the regular bills. But because I'm obedient to the word, because we are obedient to God's word, we still gave an offering. Mm -hmm. We gave an offering for Rosh Hashanah, we gave an offering for um, Yom Kippur, and we gave a nice offering for uh, Sukkot as well. And I've been telling you, any time an offering is required is to redeem something. I figured out spiritually that we're redeeming the seven layers of our auric field and really our seven chakras too. That's what's being redeemed every day. Now that that has been done, we are eligible for the final blessing of Sukkot. In rabbinical literature, 
in Kabbalah, it is believed that on Simchat Torah, there is an anointing for healing that goes out from the throne, from the presence of God. You get me? Yeah. From the presence of God. That's why, you know, you're bringing in the presence so much. The whole, every day. Yeah. Go back and listen to day one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Been talking about this all week. From God's presence, remember, they're commemorating the time when they sat in their blues or sukkah yeah. in the desert and basked and basked in the glow of the Shekinah glory of God. And the Bible says there were no sick or infirm among them, and neither did their foot swell or their sandal wear out, Amen. both a financial and a physical healing blessing. Amen. Okay? So in Kabbalah, in rabbinical literature, it is believed that on this day, an anointing and a healing ushers forth from the presence of God to heal and cure cancer. And I would tend to think probably a host of other diseases as well. But a major anointing for healing is available for us to activate and take hold of today Amen. for our healing, you know, for cancer, probably, and as I say, from a host of other diseases, but in particular, cancer. And by making these offerings the past seven days, these terima, these sacrifices, you're now eligible for that, that blessing. If you didn't make an offering, in my opinion, you're not eligible. Because mm -hmm. you're hard-headed. You're being disobedient. I just tell the truth. Yeah. But if you truly did not have, you know, this revelation just came to me a day or two before Sukkot, so I had to, you know, I wanted to jump on the bandwagon. And maybe you weren't prepared to do that. That's okay. That can happen. When I first started tithing, as you can see from my story, I wasn't prepared to just tithe. I was calling up borrowing money. The minute I wrote the check out the tithe, I was like, hey, <laughs> you let me hold uh, $50, right. you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's understandable. And the Holy Spirit reminded me yesterday or the day before, so tell the people that if they don't have the offering, they can pledge it. They, they, they can vow to make it when, you know, when I bless them with it. But you got to be saying, I mean, the Bible says, you know, you can break your word, but you can't break a vow. So if you vow this thing and pledge it, then you have to fulfill it. So if you vow to give an offering for these eight days of sukkah, be sure you do it. Be sure you do it. Don't bring a curse on yourself. Be sure to do it. I don't care what Brother Crawford Dollar says about manipulating people. Um, maybe that's true. Maybe there is manipulation going on, but believe me, this is for your good. You know, I'm manipulating you because I manipulated myself. I'm not asking you to do anything that I haven't already done. Amen. It's not manipulation. Yeah. It's well, some people will say it. You know, that they, they will criticize. And so I just say, okay, let's get in front of it. All right, yeah, it's a manipulation depending on how you want to look at it. Okay, so what? I manipulated myself. I'm I manipulating, uh, manipulated also, or whatever. Okay. Yes, there is, you know, reward, and um, sacrifice and reward. There's also um, punishment, as well, about things. 
I just have, I have to say in my spirit that the Lord does not manipulate. He's never a manipulator. He's always given us the free will to do, to obey or not obey. So our hearts have to be in line in terms of the love. Mm -hmm. Your intent should be correct and not be a manipulation. So your giving should be from your heart because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Therefore, if you're not a cheerful giver and you're giving anyway, that could be from a form of manipulation or coming out from the wrong intent. But it's still, I understand what you're saying, but there are people who are arguing since they're, um, well, why do you stop at a traffic light when it's red? Safety. Because it's, it or it protects you. Okay, you say it protects you. Mm -hmm. But most people, most of the time, stop at a traffic light because of the fear of punishment. Whether it's the fear that an accident might occur, but mostly because they think the police is going to give them a ticket and maybe even take them to jail. That's why people stop at a traffic light, especially at 1 in the morning when no one's around, supposedly. Okay? Why do you drive the speed limit? Oh, because you don't want to get a speeding ticket. It's not, be, you know, because well, I better slow down so I don't get in an accident. That might come into your mind sometimes <laughs> if it's raining or snowing. But generally, you don't want to get that ticket. And so God has said, if you do this, you'll be blessed. And if you don't do it, you won't be blessed. Some people consider that manipulation. Okay, what can I say? I'm not going to argue with you. All right, it, it's, it's manipulation. But just like stopping at the traffic light when you don't at late at night when you don't see anything coming, is for your safety. Or not speeding on the highway is for your safety. Same thing with God. Hey, this is better for you. Do this. Be safe. You know, today I've set before you blessings and cursings. Choose blessings. I've set before you life and death. Choose life. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's a manipulation. You can choose death if you want to with the free will. But he says choose life. Amen. Okay? Amen. So I told you that story about my, my giving history, my tithing history, you know, uh, because I've been asking you to give for the past, really, um, seven days. past, well, definitely the past seven days, but he, throughout all of um, the feast days, and even before the feast days, we were, we've been preparing for this move, and we need your financial help to prepare for this move, you know, to do this move and acquire the properties that the Lord is... Um, wanting me to do to help establish his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So, here it is again. You can send in your terima via a text 833-432-0653 833-432-0653 You can also go to our webpage etiamhealing.com and you can use PayPal to even, uh, both of these uh, vehicles, you can give a one-time donation or you can set up a payment plan uh, or uh, for monthly donations. And our webpage is E-T-Z, H-A-Y-I-M, that's high M, healing, H-E-A-L-I-M. N G dot com. It's I am healing dot com. And I I want you, I want to invite you. We just really started using TikTok and Instagram. Uh, and we did one treat, tweet. We haven't done another, we gotta do some more. Uh, really this past week. And we've been uh, putting some testimonies on Instagram and TikTok that you can, you know, so you can um, observe the effectiveness mm -hmm. of our ministry. 
from, you know, people. I think we got about 30 testimonies that we put one on a day. So for the next 30 days or more, we'll be putting those on TikTok and Instagram. So I invite you to check us out on Instagram and TikTok, you know, and to like us, share us, and donate to us via TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and our webpage. Yep. Okay? Yep, subscribe to our YouTube channel, too. Did you hmm? that? And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. Our, and, our, and we have it all, these on our YouTube channel. And the key phrase that you have to remember is it's high in healing. Whether it's YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or even our webpage, SIMHealing.com. What's our email address? Yes, and you can email us at SIMHealing at gmail.com. SIMHealing at gmail.com. Yep. SIMHealing. That's it. That's it. Okay, all across the board. Okay. All social media platforms. Get a t shirt. Edward, <laughs> <laughs> Edward, Tom, Zebra, Harry, Alpha, Yahoo, Igloo, Mary, Healing. Okay. There's only that. Might as well. It's not the most professional sound, but it's working. Yeah, we're, we've got the the equipment and the software to start. We just we have we don't have time to learn how to use it. So you can see everything here. Yep. The text, the donate S-I-M number. Temple, S-I-M healing dot com. And like I say, SIM Healing will get you into all of our social media platforms. YouTube, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, everything, and into our web page. And you can also email us at SIMHealing at gmail.com. All you need to know. Okay. Now, the next time we broadcast, we will be in Florida. Okay, at the new location. Hopefully, uh, if we don't have any more delays that come up, we should be. So, next Monday will be the Torah portion is Bereshit, Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 6. Study that. All right? And we're going to get to what I plan to get to today. Keep in your consciousness as you rejoice with and dance with the Torah scroll, as you do your praise and worship today. Yeah. You should just, just be listening to praise, praise and, worship and worship music all day, all day till sundown. Dancing with the Torah, be okay. Um, the Word of God is the greatest. And that as you, you know, the joy of the Lord is your strength as you do that. You know, just dance, cancer, and any other chronic or potentially fatal disease right out of your body. Amen. Okay? Now, since we have been redeeming the auric field all this past week, as well as the seven chakras, and there is anointing and anointing to heal these areas of our body. You know, let's give a little extra oomph to this. A little extra anointing. All right. I'm going to start with the crystal swords, selenite swords. I'm pointing them at the ground. Can't see it here. We don't. This box is all around me. You don't have room where you can get a full length shot. And you, you notice I'm, how I'm going like this. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling up energy from the earth, but not just from the earth. From the earth as it was in Genesis chapter one and chapter two, before the fall before Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We're pulling that energy in up 
from beneath our feet, from the earth. Put your awareness in your feet a little bit. Some of you may feel some tingling in your feet as I do this on your behalf. And we're pulling that energy up through up from the earth, from the earth that existed in Genesis chapters one and two. We're pulling that energy up through our feet, our legs, our thighs and hips into our torso and up into our heart. Let me move this table out. Well, without tipping the lights, okay. Pulling that energy puts your awareness in your heart, in the center of your chest. All right? Okay. Now, now I'm, I'm pulling energy in from New Jerusalem, from Revelations chapter 21 and Revelations chapter 22, the t from the 12 foundations of crystals that New Jerusalem sits on. We're pulling that down from New Jerusalem, down through the crown chakra into the heart. So now I've got energy coming up from the earth, from the earth as it existed in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, and from New Jerusalem, in Revelation chapter 21. So I'm pulling energy up from the earth, down from New Jerusalem, into my heart. And let it collide in my heart. Let this energy from New Jerusalem and the earth collide in my heart. Some of you may see beams of light coming through me into my chest from above as well as below. And after it collides there and mingles, it now flows through my arms, through my right arm, through my left arm, into each sword. And I'm going to peek at my notes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me put them down here. Just give me a moment. Just keep seeing that light coming up from the earth and that energy coming up from the earth and the anointing and energy coming down from New Jerusalem into your heart, going out into each arm and each sword. Okay. Now I'm going to take one sword and keep pointing it at the earth, pulling up and activating the chakra in the earth under my feet. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to keep pulling energy in from New Jerusalem. going higher and higher, pulling that energy down through the Merkaba at the end of the sword, into me. Pulling it in. Now, the energy is flowing, the anointing is flowing up from the earth, up my legs and thighs, my stomach into the center of my chest, and down from New Jerusalem, from the 12 foundations, from the four walls of crystals, coming down my crown chakra on the top of my head into my chest. It's just like I'm being impaled by a beam of light coming up coming down and it meets and just explodes in my heart chakra. This energy. 
Just breathe in and breathe out. And after it explodes in my heart chakra, it goes out to my right arm, my left arm, and into the swords in each hand. Now, I'm going, I'm raising them up and extending them so that they extend to all seven layers of my auric field. That energy coming from New Jerusalem, coming from the earth, is cleansing, activating, anointing, healing, empowering my seven auras of my auric field. Through the etheric, through the emotional body, through the mental body, through the astral body, in my heart, in my heart chakra, through the etheric template, through the celestial, and finally through the cathartic or the casual, as I stand, extend out through all the auric fields and that energy, that anointing, that blessing is coming through into my chest, into my arms, into my swords, into you. Through my entire auric field, yes. Use your consciousness, your faith, your covenant to access what is being done. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, coming into the heart chakra, the center of the chest, the etheric body, the emotional body, the mental body, the astral body, the celestial body. the casual body of the cathartic. All right. Okay. Amen. Now. We've been bringing down a beam of light from New Jerusalem, a beam of light up from the earth, bringing it into our chest, Let's just feel it in our heart chakra, in the chest. Now let's compress the light. Yes, into one beam running from above all the way into the earth. Let it expand. Oh yeah. <laughs> Expand and to just open us up in our auric field to receive more light, more anointing, more, more. Mm. Then let's take it. The light of Yeshua. Compress it. Bring it all together. Coming down the center of our body, from the crown of our hands to the sole of our feet, into the earth, reaching into the heavens. Compress it. Have it all running through us. The Holy Spirit. Ah, yeah. Holy Breathe in. Holy Spirit. Breathe out. Compress it. But they say in the gym, your weight, your weight, your weight. Yeah. Bring mm -hmm. that all in. Put your awareness in the center of your chest. Yes. Yes. Alla loro basso, le scelte di anno d'asta. 
Okay, breathe. Receive the anointing and the healing to the healing cure cancer and other diseases. Okay. Put your awareness in the center of your chest again for your heart chakra. And now let's breaststroke in the Holy Spirit throughout our entire auric field. It's like we're breaststroke. We're expanding. We're coming into the heart. We're expanding the heart and stretching the heart chakra throughout the entire auric field. Yes. And come back in. And expand now. Go into the heart. Go out and breaststroke it in. Expand the heart into the auric field. Ah. Come in. Let's go into the etheric body, the emotional body, the mental body, the astral body, the celestial body. Into the entire template, the cathartic template. Uh, did I forget to say one of the bodies? Uh, Three, four. What's yeah, the no. what's the one before? Oh, okay, I know. Okay, let's come into the heart chakra, expand it into the etheric body then into the emotional body, then into the mental body, then into the astral, then into the emotional template body, then into the causal. Oh, I felt that one. I felt that. Did you feel that? Mm -hmm. I felt that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's do it two more times. Make sure we get three times with that. We come into the heart. We expand the heart into the etheric body. Then into the emotional body. Then into the mental body. Then into the astral body then into the celestial or the etheric template. Mm -hmm. The etheric template, then the celestial, and then the etheric, the cutheric template. And every time I come in, I feel that stretch. Mm. Come into the heart again. Go out through the heart chakra. Expand the heart chakra into the etheric body, then into the emotional body, then into the mental body, then into the astral body, then into the etheric template. Mm -hmm. Then, oh, I felt that. I felt right there, right there, right there. More. <laughs> More. More, more. Uh, yeah. Really, who, who? Yeah, right here. Uh, yeah, let, let me feel you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Then into the etheric right. template, now the celestial, and finally the cathartic template, a causal. One more time, perfectly. Let's go into the heart, 
into the heart chakra, expand the heart chakra into the etheric body, expand it into the emotional body, now expand it into the mental body, now into the astral body, now into the etheric template body, now into the celestial body, and finally into the cathartic all the way out. And back in. Just breathe. Feel the light. Feel the presence. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whew. Okay. Can you hand me the Torah scroll? Okay, I did lose the camera on you because I can't see the I'm going to leave the camera on you if I get up. Okay. Okay. We've enthroned the presence. Now, dancing with the Taurus girl. Mm -hmm. Dancing with the Taurus girl on my right. His presence on my left in the Holy Monstrance. We have the anointed wafer inside the center there. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Just need some music. <laughs> I'm rejoicing in this. That's a hard one. Dance. It's on Facebook, so it's a copyright. We can't play music. Yeah, la 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 basura, shilaliano, basta la. Yeah, la 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 basura, shilaliano, basta. Yeah, la la basura. Ah, la riano da sta. Ye la 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 basu de sila. Ah, la basta la 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 basu de sila. Ah, la riano da sta. Okay. Hallelujah. Let me hold this over so. When we have a congregation in presence, I go through them and. They can kiss the Torah scroll and grab the hem of Yeshua's garment for their healing, like the woman with the issue of blood. Okay. Can you take these from me now? Hallelujah. Okay. We're going to finish. with communion again. Yeah. Ah, that was wonderful. I was rationing out the wine over the holidays because I didn't want to open up a new bottle. Mm -hmm. What did you do with the bottle? I threw it away. Oh, you threw it away already? Right? Can you go get it real quick? <laughs> so, I'd like to give a pictorial of what I've been doing. How do y'all feel out there? See, I emptied it today. And this is the last of the Colorado rye. Amen. Okay. The last of the Colorado rye. It's time to move. Amen. Okay. Abba Yahweh, Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, Ruach HaKadosh. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. I don't know what that's to. <laughs> Ruach HaKadosh. 
Abba Yahweh, Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, Ruach HaKadosh. Amen. Come down in power upon the elements of the Holy Communion table. Fill the unleavened bread with your body, the cup of the fruit of the vine with your blood, and the total essence thereof, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. For your word says your blood speaks, but it speaks a better thing than the blood of Abel. Your word also says your voice is as the sound of a mighty shofar. Let the shofar sound of the voice of your blood be heard throughout our entire triune being. Let it be heard in the right hemisphere of our brain. Let it be heard in the left hemisphere of our brain. Let it be heard in that section of our brain called the amygdala which is the seat of our emotions and controls our entire endocrine system. Let it be heard in the thalamus and hippocampus where our memories are formed. Let it be heard along every axiom in our brain, in every dendrite, in every synaptic recess, along all our neural pathways, and let it form new neural pathways that lead to total shalom in you. Let it be heard in the penile gland, Lord. Let it be heard in the pituitary gland, Father. Let it be heard in our thyroid glands, Lord. Let it be heard in our thalamus. Let it be heard in our hearts and lungs, Lord. In our stomachs and kidneys and intestines, Lord. Let the shofar sound of the blast of your voice be heard. Yes, Saying shalom, peace, be still. Let it be heard, Father, from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, down to the very marrow on our bones, Lord, in the womb of every woman and in the loins of every man. Let it be heard, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the way down to the cellular and molecular level, even into our very DNA, Lord, and the atomic level, Father. Shalom. Hello. Peace be still. On that faithful night, the Lord took bread and he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken, that yours may be whole. And after he had so done and supped, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine. And he said, This is my blood, which is shed for the remission of your sins and the establishment of the brick cut of shot. Take it and eat and drink ye all of it. For my body is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. The body and blood of Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth. Okay. I'll get the last. Okay. Mm -hmm. Drink and eat all of it. We can drink all of it. Oh boy. Uh, I hope you feel it like I do. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes, Lord. Well, this includes this year's observance of the fall feast of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Tabernacles, and Simchat Torah. Next week is Bereshit, the new Torah portion. Amen. Torah portion number one. Amen. Very good, very faithful. Again, text to donate, 833-432-0653. Get that in today. Don't let, the, don't let the sun go down on you today without making your sacrifice. 833-432-0653. If you have any problems donating, just give us a call. Ha Shemayak, happy Simchat Torah, 
and may the blessings of our risen Savior, Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, be upon you. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Pray for us that we have a safe trip to Florida. Ask the Lord to send his holy warning angels to go before us, equipped with flaming swords of the Holy Spirit, to make all crooked places straight, all the rough places smooth, to exalt every valley that we may find ourselves in, and to make all our mountains low. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.